here with uh, Zach, who's a creator of Gene 515, and it's a uh, illustrated uh, novel. Yes, it is. Yeah, so uh, I didn't want to go the full graphic route on this, graphic novel, so instead uh, I wrote the whole book and uh, then put in essentially storyboards with a couple of splash images to keep things going. So it, uh, I'm calling it an illustrated novel because it does have at least one or two pictures on every spread. Uh, to keep the story moving, but then it's uh, all fully written uh, novelization here. So what's the uh, main story of, of your first book here? Uh, so Gene 515 is the story of uh, Frank the dog and his boy Kida, and they are living in the last great city on earth. It takes place uh, you know, about a thousand years in the future, and uh, the world is dying. They believe the world to be dead. and um, so. Frank and Keita are working in a science lab, trying to navigate the, the, the two factions in the city that are uh, either let the world die and we go to space, or we try to fix this thing. Um, and so they get swept up into the events beyond their control and pretty soon figure out uh, life isn't necessarily as easy to extinguish on Earth, and there might be more to this story than they were led to believe. So um, what uh, age group are you targeting with the book? Uh, you know, I think my writing style is about eighth or ninth grade level. Okay. Um, so, it uh, the the age group is you know it's nerds and aged nerds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think it would be uh, suitable for anybody younger than uh, about eight. Okay. But um, you know, I, my my son is six. He's a little advanced at reading, and uh, he started reading it. There's nothing in it that's going to offend anybody like that, but the the word uh, the wording might be a little bit hard uh, for people to grasp. So, what inspired you to take on a look at a post-apocalyptic world? Um, oh, you know, current events played a role for sure. You know, seeing everything that's happening today, and uh, you know, trying to think about where this is going to end up. Um, you know, current events just in everything that's happening today: global warming, and uh, you know international politics and you know who knows there's a million ways that right. humanity could kill itself off um, and so I, I started at the point of you know that whatever apocalypse was going to happen has already happened and the, the humanity has come together into to one last stand basically uh, on the planet so I don't deal a lot with you know what would have happened what did happen right. it's hinted at but it's not the main focus of the book uh, it's a setting that allows me to deal with uh, those issues of humanity on a smaller scale uh, with, you know, sci-fi stuff that can be a lot of fun. Right. And so, um, you know, uh, obviously one of the more famous uh, stories about that right now is The Walking Dead, right? And, yes. and really, it's, it's not really about zombies, it's about how humanity deals with uh, Absolutely. this reduced world. How does that compare with the type of themes that you have in your book? Uh, Walking Dead, in my opinion, deals a lot with the interpersonal relationships and uh, they very quickly get to the point where you realize the zombies aren't the threat, the people are the threat. Um, and so uh, I don't deal with that as much. I, I do have uh, you know, other characters and animals that are in there as well, but they're all it's sort of everybody's people. Um, and I'm not dealing, I'm not quite as savage, I guess, as, uh, as sure. The Walking Dead uh, is at times. Uh, so right now there's two books in this series. Um, is that the entire story or how, how far do you think you're going to go? Uh, so I'm, I'm calling this book one, volume one, uh, because there are six volumes in this book. So okay. book one is already written. The whole arc is done um, and I'm illustrating it uh, one at a time. So I've got volume one here. Volume two is ready as well. Uh, volume three is in the works and I want to get at least through that book one. Now I do have outlines for two additional books, so it could potentially be 18 in total oh. before it gets to the end of this plot line. But um, there's also, uh, I like to think, potential in there for side stories as well. And it's, it's hard for me not to get pulled onto those uh, when I start thinking about it, because I want to get through this plot line first. Right. Uh, so uh, one of the panels I went to this morning was um, talking about uh, world building and, and all the things that go along with that. Um, I gather this is set on Earth. Yes, um, yes it is. Uh, is there anything particular about the world uh, in your novel that kind of 
affects the way that the characters are interacting with their world. Absolutely. I mean, the first and foremost, you know, um, would be the the sentience of animals. Okay. Um, so uh, especially, you know, this is Frank the dog, uh, and so the 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 dogs are. Um, Paired up within the city, they're considered citizens. They're you know okay. people as well, and uh, they communicate. Uh, the dogs can talk, interact. Um, Frank's got a, a backpack here. I don't know if I got the picture, but Frank's got a backpack here that uh, he can you know interact with the world. It gives him you know hands. Okay. Um, so that definitely plays a role in how things are going to go in the world itself. But I love the idea of the world as a character. You know, I. I seeing a character is kind of one-dimensional but then where they interact where they're existing right. is as important as the character right. itself and so that absolutely plays a role in this uh, and and what they're gonna do with each other yeah Scott Snyder um, uh, when he was here at Comic-Con uh, about five or six years ago and I was talking to him when he had first uh, started with the Court of Owls he was talking about how he sees Gotham as a, as much a character as Batman and the other, yeah. the other characters. What made you decide to make the animal sentient, and how does that affect uh, where the story goes? Um, you know, I always just kind of figured, uh, you know, the dog is man's best friend, you know, and there's there's something there. Uh, I've done a, a little bit of research on uh, the idea that uh, wolves uh, domesticated themselves. It wasn't that you know humans went out and captured wolves and forced them to, to be friends. Uh, but, you know, the, the wolves sort of, as a social animal, saw, hey, I can do pretty good by sticking with these guys. And, you know, it, it's a, a symbiotic relationship that worked itself out over time. And so, you know, where is that going to go in the future? Um, so, you know, there's a little bit of fun involved, obviously. You know, uh, nobody's dog is going to be typing a novel of their own anytime <laughs> soon. But, you know, maybe that's where we're going to end up, you right. know, uh, and it's fun to think about. So that, that was the jumping off point uh, for this uh, particular book here. And uh, in, in the world, by the time we get to the first book, are the dogs fully accepted as citizens? Is there some, like, dog racism or anything like that? Uh, so the, the dogs are fully accepted citizens at this point, but I've had that idea, um, and I made reference to it, not in this book, but later on, uh, as to where they gained citizenship. Okay. So there, there, is, there was at some point, uh, you know, backstory there. And that's one of those avenues that I had to try not to go down too deeply. <laughs> right. Because um, it, it's almost a story in itself, you know, right. like I, I kind of want to know what, what was it 150 years ago that got the dogs uh, full citizenship itself, right. you know? Because um, that must have been a conflict unto itself anyway. Um, but yeah, where we start here, the dogs are, are fully accepted, uh, working along with uh, the humans. I, I would assume there's obviously going to be some sort of... Uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think there there would there would be some sort of dog racism, but I, you know I'm not focusing on that yeah, in, yeah. in the story here, particularly since it is uh, in in this case uh, you know Frank's the boss, uh, so it's Frank the dog and his boy Tita okay. uh, are the the characters here, and I, I try to phrase it that way because uh, you know the Frank's the one with the authority, he outranks him, he's the lab hand, and Tita's the assistant. Got it. Um, so for for our purposes here their best buddies you know okay. it's a boy and his dog yeah 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 um, or a dog and his boy or a dog and his boy absolutely uh, so is there anything else that you wanted to talk about or mention uh, I mean if, if that sound, I don't want to give away too much about the book if you know if that sounds intriguing you can find it on on Barnes and Noble search gene 515 uh, it's the only one that comes up right now uh, it is obviously a pun on Genesis they're living in a dead world and they're gonna try or not try depending on which route they go to uh, revive Hello, that you know that's Baltimore the genesis thing. thank you Will yeah absolutely thank you child?